Hi guys, letting y'all come in the room, come on in, it's time for Tea Time Thursday, let me turn my music down, come on guys, how are you, come on in the room, come on in, Hey, hey, hey. I see some people are coming in. I cannot see comments, and I don't know if that's a blessing or not. But come on in, anyhow. We're going to do what God wants to do, okay? All right. I'm not seeing any comments yet, and I don't know if that's because you guys have not said anything or if I'm not going to be able to see comments tonight but just come on in anyway okay Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all. Welcome to Bible study. Welcome to Bible study. I hope you are ready for this word that the Holy Spirit has to share with us. Okay, well, I see you guys coming in, so we're going to get started shortly. I cannot see any comments. And I'm trying to make sure that I don't let that bother me. So as soon as enough of y'all get in here and I see my wives and waiting leaders in the room to help me monitor the comments and all of that, hey, I will get started. It is 8.01 and hopefully we're not going to go long tonight. I have set my timer for 35 minutes because I want us to do quick surgery tonight. And I'm going to leave you with the rest of the work to do once we get off of here. But I believe God is going to do it. I'm excited too, Selena. It's going to be something. <sighs> yes. It's going to be something. Okay. 802, come on in, come on in. Go ahead and share this in all your groups. All share it on your timeline. Tell your girls, tell your sisters that we are on for tea time for Bible study. It's going to be quick surgery, girl. There's some stuff that God wants to get in and get out, and it's going to be good, okay? Everybody's getting snatched together. This wig may or may not stay on before we're done. We'll see. Um, Yeah, so share, share, share. And our, uh, yeah, put this everywhere. I'm going to give us about two more minutes and then we are going to pray. Welcome to Tea Time, everybody. This is Thursday night Tea Time with, with Wives in Waiting. Okay, this is not going to work. Let's see. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to let that distract me. Let's see. We got about two more minutes and then we're gonna pray. So let me see what's going on with our sharing. Y'all make sure I'm in the right um, place. Okay. Okay. Come on in, come on in, come on in. We're about to pray. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in, come on in. We are about to pray. Okay, so if it's not letting us share it now, then whoever gets in the room just gets in the room, and we're going to share it afterwards. We're going to go ahead and pray because 
I don't want you guys to miss anything that God wants you to have tonight. So, Heavenly Father, we just bless you for this time of gathering together as your daughters. We thank you that deliverance is our portion. We thank you that freedom is our portion, God. We thank you that you have prepared the hearts of the women who will hear this word tonight. We thank you that you have prepared a feast for us, oh God. We thank you that deliverance and freedom is the children's bread. We give you praise for what you will do in our lives, in our families, in our generations with this Bible study tonight. We ask that your Holy Spirit speak and um, utter with power, God, that the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So we ask for your power on this live tonight, God. Let this Bible study be a transformation point in all of our lives in the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, that we will have hearts to receive it, God. Let our hearts not be hearts of stone. Give us a heart of flesh to obey your word. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Okay, so we're going to dive right in. If one of my leaders can post tonight's Bible study topic for us, if you've seen our graphic today, our topic is don't get ready, stay ready. We are going to be learning about Sister Jael, and she is found in Judges chapter 4, verse 17 through 22. Hey, Jen. Okay, you're not talking to me, my bad. Let me mind my business. Okay, so Judges chapter 4, verse 17 to 22. Quick little backstory. When Jael enters the picture, this is what's going on with the children of Israel. They're in a cycle of falling away, getting got by their enemies, and then repenting. So that's where they are in the cycle. Here, where we meet them in Judges 4, they have been at the mercy of their enemies for about 20 years. Um, God used the king of Canaan, whose name is Jabin, and his commander Sisera to punish Israel by selling them into their enemies' hands. But that's all the background I'm going to give to you because I want to get right into it. So when we meet um, Sister Jael, she is in verse 17. So what happened was there was a battle, a war between Israel and their enemies, and the, the children of Israel were winning. And the captain of the enemy's army ran off, and his name is Jabin. No, not Jabin. The king is Jabin. Sisera is the captain of the enemy's camp that was fighting the children of Israel. So Sisera decided that he was going to leave the battlefield because they were losing and he was about to get got. And he ran off and he found where to hide. And who does he run to but Sister Jael? Jael is the wife of Habar, who is a Kenite. Sisera and... um. Sorry, y'all. I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm excited. Sisera, the commander of the army, works for King Jabin. Jabin and the Kenites have peace between them. So Jael's husband and the king of the enemy army are at peace. All right. So this is some tea, y'all. So anyways, Sisera thinking, oh, homegirl is right here. And Jael, you know, she don't, she don't make it any, any easier for him either. She's like... Your Highness, come in, come in. You can hide right in here. I'm paraphrasing. She said, come on in, I got you. So he goes into her tent and um, he was like, can I get some water? I'm thirsty. And she was like, sure, I'll help you out. We're in Judges chapter four. This is the mold paraphrase. And she was like, yeah, I got you. So she hides him under a blanket and she's like, I'm gonna give you some milk, sir. You're gonna be all right. And she gives him some milk and she he drinks the milk and he falls asleep and jael said all right sisera jael took her peg her tent peg put it up on his temple and wham she puts the peg through his head and he dies and when um barack comes looking for the enemy she he's like hey homeboy came in here did he and she's like, oh, I'll show him where he is. I'll show you where he is. And she pulls the cover back and there laid homeboy, um, what's his name again? Sisera, dead. And Barack was shook. So that was the story. Now, why is this important? What Jael did was actually treacherous. This was betrayal. According to the standards of the children of Israel, what she did was not only controversial, it was trifling according to their standards. So she killed somebody that was at peace with her husband. If anybody was looking at the standards of that day, what she did was 
treachery. It was betrayal. <sighs> God used what was culturally treacherous to accomplish his purpose. But um, it was controversial. It was controversial, but homegirl did it to, to um, accomplish God's purposes. Sisera deserved to die. And people don't want to, don't want to, um, the people probably would not have taken that position because they felt like Sisera was at peace with Jael's husband. She had a duty to protect him. When she gave him shelter, she should have kept him safe, but she killed him. Sisera deserved to die because he was an enemy of the people of God. There are some things in your family that your people have made peace with that actually deserve to die because they are the enemy of God. Um, Sisera deserved to die because he was an enemy of God and he was used to oppress the people of God. But Jael's husband had made peace with his king. That, well, I'm going to repeat it again. Some of y'all have made peace with things that actually need to be put to death. Some of your family members have made peace with things that are in contradiction to God and need to be put to death. If Jael had had mercy on Sisera, there is no telling how quickly he would have sold her into bondage. There is no telling how quickly he would have turned on her and her family. Because of the death of Sisera, the children of Israel were able to eventually prevail against Jabin and destroy the king of Canaan. What do you need to put to death so that others in your generation and bloodline can be free? There are things that you need that needs to die right now that you guys are still catering to because it has been in your life, in your family, in your bloodline for years. Everybody's cool with it. This is how we've been doing it for generations upon generations. But this thing is an enemy of God. And if you don't put it to death, nobody in your line is ever going to be free. The people connected to you are never going to be free. It may be playing nice with you right now, but if it does not die, there is no freedom for you and those that are connected to you. Because whatever you have been catering to that is an enemy of God, it is bondage for you and those that you love girl when I said you like this word messed me up today I couldn't get off of it every time I thought I was done preparing the God was like here's some more stuff okay the other thing that I need y'all to understand is that if um if this Sisera is a kind of sin then Jabin the king is a kind of devil this is from um a sermon by Spurgeon so if Sisera is sin Jabin is the devil some of y'all are defeating sin. You're defeating it by overcoming it for the time being. You're defeating it by not giving into it for the time being. When what you actually need to be doing is killing it. You need to kill it before it holds you in bondage and has you bound for generations upon generation. Sin has been put to death by the cross of Christ. There are things in your bloodline that Christ already died for, but because your family member liked them, it is still in your bloodline and you are, you are petting these sins. You are defeating it temporarily by saying, Oh, I'm not going to do that. What you need to do is go toe to toe with it and kill it. And how do you kill it? That's what deliverance is for, sis. That's what deliverance is for. That's what breaking generational curses is for. Just because you didn't fall into the temptation does not mean it's not waiting at the door for your son or your daughter or your granddaughter or your great granddaughter. If you don't defeat it and kill it now, it's going to be waiting for the next generation that comes after you. It has to die. Christ has already paid the penalty for that sin to die. Don't cater to it in your bloodline. Okay, we're moving on because I'm not going to be here all day with y'all. Okay, so Jael made herself an enemy of her culture by killing something that was actually, that killing someone that was at peace with her husband. Be prepared to be an enemy of this culture, an enemy of social norms, and an enemy of life as you know it in order for you to be obedient to God. The enemy is banking on you to show compassion for things that should be condemned, killed, or uprooted. Do not be fooled. He is banking on you to look at that thing in your bloodline, in your family, and say, well, that's no big deal. We're just going to make sure that doesn't happen to us. This has to be uprooted. This has to be killed. If you don't kill it, it's coming back, and it's going to be bondage. All right. If you don't kill your sin, be prepared for your sin to kill you and hold your household hostage. 
If you don't kill your sin, be prepared for your sin to kill you and hold your household hostage. Because let me tell you, in terms of war, if Sisera had not been defeated, if the children of Israel had not been defeated, I don't think he was going to be like, hold on, let me make sure my homeboy does not get swept up in the people y'all killing. Let me make sure his wife is good or whatever. All of those people in the children of Israel's camp would have been dead. If she had shown mercy on that man and he got a second win and that arm, army got a, a fresh start, a fresh attack on the children of Israel and they were able to succeed, he wasn't going to show mercy on them. You guys keep having compassion on an enemy that does not have compassion on you. When you see sin, when you see anything that looks like anti-God in your bloodline, don't turn your back to it and say, well, I'm just not going to do that. You have to kill it. If you don't kill it, it's coming back to kill you. And that's just point blank, period. Okay, and the other thing is that if you are able to conquer your sin without killing it, you're going to end up in a cycle of um, performing morality. If I'm able to resist the temptation to, to have sex outside of marriage, but I don't deal with the lust that has manifested all throughout my family, all throughout the generations connected to me, all I'm going to be doing is, well, at least I keep my leg closed so all, everything is cool. You're going to be literally performing morality rather than getting true deliverance, rather than getting the true freedom that only comes from the Spirit of God. All right, we're moving on. This is, like I said, this is a really quick word tonight. <laughs> so the things that I want us to learn from Jael, I'm going to give you some points. Number one, when God gives you an opportunity, act on it. This is why I told you don't get ready, stay ready. When God gives you an opportunity, you have to act on it. She saw an opportunity to defeat the enemy that was raging against her people, and she took it. She did not wait and say, okay, um, I'm, I'm technically not in the army, so I'm going to try to hold him here until somebody that is, that is um, licensed to fight comes and gets him. She did not wait. She saw that the hand of God had given her this opportunity to get rid of this enemy once and for all, and she took it. She did what was necessary and ordained by God, even if it was controversial. Anyone who saw her inviting a man who was at peace with her husband into her tent and then killing him would say that she was a horrible woman. But she saw an opportunity that God provided and took it, and that meant deliverance and freedom for the children of Israel. All right, that's point number one. Point number two is use what you got. Use what is in your hand. Jael did not look for a sword. She used her peg. Use what you already know. And you have exactly what you need in order to win this fight. A lot of us, we are waiting for pastors and bishops and um, anybody that we feel like is more ordained, more powerful before we do the work that God has called us into our family, into our spaces, into our community to do, because we feel like, well, I don't have a title and I don't have these years of experience in ministry. God says, use what's in your hand. Jael did not look for a sword. If she had looked for a sword, she would have missed her moment. A good example that came to me is that if you see a generational pattern manifesting in your bloodline and you say, okay, this needs to stop. You see it today. You don't say, okay, we got convocation in a year. So in a year, I'm going to take my family to convocation and we all going to get delivered. Ma'am of God, stop it. Use what's in your hand. Don't wait for the sword at convocation. Use the peg that's in your hand right now. This right here, why isn't waiting Bible study? That's your peg. Your sisters that are in your phone that know how to pray heaven down, that's a peg. <laughs> the leaders in here, we're pegs. Here's your peg, sis. Use what's in your hand, okay? Use what is in your hand. You cannot wait for deliverance. You cannot wait for it to come from anyone else. You cannot wait for somebody to come bring you a sword from the other town. You cannot wait for the leader of the army to show up. Use what's in your hand. The day of deliverance is now. Next. God equips us for every opportunity he provides. Um, 
We don't know anything about Jael ever been trained for battle for anything. But when she knocked that peg into that man's head, it went straight into the ground. Why? Because she's a woman. And in those days, the women were in charge of building the tents. So she already knew how to build a tent. She knew how to knock a tent peg into the ground. You guys are disqualifying the things that God has trained you to do because you don't know that this is exactly what God is going to use to deliver you and your family. If you're a worshiper, worship girl. If you're a prayer warrior, pray. If you're a teacher of the word, read the word and, and, and use it for your situation. Whatever is in your hand is enough for you. God has prepared you for this fight. Stop waiting for somebody else to show up and take the fight for you. This is your fight. This is your family. This is your generation. Go and fight. God has prepared you for the fight that's coming. All right. So in conclusion, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so let us pray. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you that it was quick and it was effective and you did what you needed to do for your daughters tonight. We thank you that deliverance is the children's bread. We thank you that every curse, every pattern, everything that is sin, that is being born in our, in our lives, in our families' lives, in our descendants' life, Lord, we thank you that tonight is the night of deliverance. We thank you, God, that you are cutting off the head of the enemy that has been raging against us, that sin will no longer just be defeated in our bloodlines. It will be put to death because Christ has already died to kill our sin, God. We thank you that we are women who are prepared for the fight that you have put before us, God. That we will not wait for somebody else to take the fight out of our hands. We thank you for whatever weapons you have put in our hands because they are sufficient to win the battles that are raging in our lives. We thank you that we are ready, willing, and able, God, to do what is controversial and what is considered betrayal in our families, in our culture, in the society in order to obey the voice of God that says strike now. Lord, we thank you that you are positioning us to be the women you have called us to be in this moment, oh God, that we will be women who rough deliverance for our families and for our generations. Every single person that is connected to us will walk free from the abuse of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We bless you, God, because you are the God who frees us. You are the God who walks deliverance for us. You are the God who does only what you can do. You are the God who puts the enemy to shame on our behalf. We thank you that no Sisera will rise up in our lives, oh God. That when we see them, we will strike in the name of Jesus. We will not wait for the captain of the army. We will not wait for the pastor or the bishop. Because you have called us women whose hands are effective to war on the, on the behalf of our families in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the harassment of the enemy ceases in this generation, oh God. That our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren... Will not have the same fight against the spirit of lust, against the spirit of violence, against the spirit of the occult, against the darkness and the, and the oppression of the enemy, oh God. That they will walk as free women and free men in the name of Jesus. We thank you that our households, whether they have been oppressed for generations or the oppression started in this generation, God, that our households will be free and we will walk in holiness and power and purity and love in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, that every assault of the enemy, everything that the enemy has tried to use to held us bound for years and years and years and says that we shall not be free. We say that his assault comes to an end tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, we bless you that deliverance is the children's bread. We said every generation pattern comes to an end tonight. Every sinful generational pattern is broken tonight. Every generational curse that rests upon your daughters in any way, God, is broken tonight. We say we are walking free from this moment on in the name of Jesus. We will not bow to the bowels of this world. We will not bow to the enemy. We will not cater to him in the name of Jesus. We will do what you have called us to do. Our hands to be effective to make war in the in the in the land and on behalf of our families, God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you for what you have done. And we claim the victory. We stand upon the victory that you have given us in, in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. All right. That's what I came to do, y'all. I love you. Share this with your friends if they didn't get on tonight. Good night, you guys. Oh, church announcements. Come back here on Thursdays. We'll have tea time every single Thursday. Join us for prayer on the first Monday of the month. 
at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time and the last Monday of the month at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we are good to go. I release y'all into the hands of the Lord. Let this word continue to ring in your heart. Let me tell you one more time, don't get ready, stay ready. If the enemy brings the fight to you, if he thinks he's going to be comfortable in your family because he has been comfortable in your families in the time past, make sure you put him to death. You have the power in the blood of Jesus to crucify everything that the enemy, em, enemy tries to bring your way. Don't let it live. Don't have compassion on it. Don't baby it. Don't pet your sins. Make sure they die. All right. I love y'all. Have a great one.